Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast today. For those who may not know, I'm a self-employed, location-independent, family-focused entrepreneur, and I make my entire living online. That was my dream when I started my business, but this podcast is not about me. I started this podcast to help you find success too by interviewing some of the biggest authors, influencers, and entrepreneurs on the planet. My mission is to unlock their strategies and tactics that my guests use to succeed so you can go out and find your success as well. Which brings me to my guest today, Ashley Drummonds. She is the founder of abspancakes.com and she is a winner. I guess you call them a winner, but she got a deal on Shark Tank. Now, as many of you know, I have another podcast. It's called Flip Lifestyle. I run up a community called the Flip Lifestyle Community where I help people start, build, and grow online memberships. So we have a lot of people that reach out asking us about starting a membership site. Well, I got a message the other day from a girl named Ashley Drummonds. And I was reading this email and she was like, hey, I'm thinking about starting a membership site. Hey, I've got this brand. Hey, I've got this product. It's all about protein. And it's got, and we make, uh, we put protein into pancakes. And I started thinking, I was like, protein pancakes, wait a minute. Where have I heard about protein pancakes before? Oh, it's Shark Tank. And then as I read farther along, I was like, wait a minute. This is the girl that was on Shark Tank. This is Ashley Drummonds who went on to Shark Tank with her idea of making protein pancakes. And she got a deal with Damon John. So I hit reply and I was like, oh my gosh, I saw your Shark Tank episode. It's absolutely amazing. One, I'd love to help you start a membership site because that's what we do. But two, could you come on my podcast and tell people, one, how did you get on Shark Tank? Two, how did you get a deal on Shark Tank? And three, tell me your story about what happened after you got a deal on Shark Tank. And we're going to talk all about that today. Ashley's going to tell us how she came up with this amazing idea for a product. She's going to tell us the top secret process on how you apply and get onto Shark Tank. It's so simple, guys. It's going to blow your mind when you hear this. She's going to tell us what it's like to go into the tank. How does that work? How do you connect with the sharks? How do you talk to the other entrepreneurs? How do you prepare a pitch that's not only going to be presented to some of the best business people on the planet, but to millions of people all over the world? How to close the deal and how to take advantage of the momentum from such an amazing opportunity. Ashley's entrepreneurial journey is absolutely fascinating, guys. This was a fun podcast. We're going to talk for a while. This is not a short one. But I think that every entrepreneur and everybody out there who loves Shark Tank is going to really enjoy today's podcast. So if you love Shark Tank or you've ever wanted to be on Shark Tank, or maybe you're just an entrepreneur out there trying to grow an online business, go grab a notebook and a pen, pour yourself a cup of coffee or maybe a jar of sweet tea. Take some notes, sit back and enjoy the show. Three, two, one. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Shane. I'm pumped to talk to you. We've been, I've been excited to talk to you all day long. We've been talking via email and some other things like recently. And I was like, man, this is gonna be a fun conversation today. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I, I Sometimes I laugh because I don't know how I ended up doing this for a living because this sometimes feels like I should not make money doing this because it's just so awesome talking to people. Yeah, exactly. Like you feel like you're just playing all day long and you're like, did I work at all today? Or was I just talking all day long? It's all awesome. <laughs> I know. And you make fitness videos and stuff on like Instagram. So you're like, did I just worked out that somehow still work? I mean, life is what a work, what a time to be alive. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. Actually, I was at the gym yesterday doing videos and I told somebody it was like two hours. I was like, do you ever have the moment where you're like, this is I just worked out. Like, how is this even possible? This is what I <laughs> I do. I've got a group of friends that I text all day. We're all business owners and we do online business. And um, whenever one of us does something ridiculous like that, well, uh, someone will text uh, hashtag fake jobs because we like, right. like these jobs didn't even exist like 10 years ago. But we'll get to that. Let's talk a little bit more about you real quick for all everybody that's listening. Um, you, of course, um, uh, we're on Shark Tank and you actually got a deal on Shark Tank. You got to, I, uh, I, I remember specifically your episode. <laughs> I totally remember your episode. I'm almost positive. We have, we have, uh, got your pancakes in our pantry or <laughs> we ate that we have eaten the protein pancakes at one point because jo my wife, Jocelyn 
is a Shark Tank nut, and, but she's. Mm -hmm. I, but I think she views it more like the Home Shopping Network because yep. as soon as the episode's over, she's buying the Aqua Vault or the protein pancakes <laughs> or whatever. So yep. let's go back before Shark Tank. Give me a little bit of information about you, your background, how you started making pancakes, and then we'll talk about <laughs> what happened after that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my background is the fitness industry. I love it. Back in, I did the whole thing where it was like, you know, from 18 to like 21, 22. I was the kid that had a really hard time figuring out college. I didn't even know like, oh, it's my senior year of college or high school. <laughs> I should figure that out. And like friends were talking about it. I was like, should I be doing this? Like, what do you guys, how do you know this stuff? Um, well, I was, I did the fifth year of college, so I didn't have mine figured out either. If that tells you anything, I was like the fourth year came around and I was like, yeah, I'm not done. I'm just going to keep going to see what happens here. And then maybe I'll figure right. it out in the fifth year. So. Well, you think that eventually, like, it's like everybody else has an idea. They're like, oh, I totally want to be a doctor or a firefighter or whatever. And you're like, uh, what about if you don't know, like, how are you supposed to figure that out? And looking back, like, I feel like that's signs of a great entrepreneur because I was always a terrible employee because I would figure things out. And I'm like, moving on, this job is terrible. Um, <laughs> but, right. So right. I like, I was taking all the basic general ed things and I got to the point where I had to declare a major and I just figured like, you know what, I don't have a clue of what I'm doing, but one day I want to have my own business. So it makes sense. Maybe I should just do business, which business degrees do nothing for real world business, but it was something, it was a choice. Um, and about a month later, right after I finished, I was like, actually change that. I want to do fitness. Let's do personal training. I cannot sit behind a desk all day. And I got into it because like, I really did a lot of my own personal transformation just through working out and understanding how much my mental discipline and focus changed by going to the gym, doing something positive, strength training every single day. Um, so I got into that because once I discovered it, I wanted to just tell everybody about it. I wanted to share it with people because I had no idea, like, so many people, and even it's been years, but when I was working with clients in the beginning and they would come to me, like, I want to lose five pounds or 20 pounds, whatever it might be. People think that that's why they're getting into it. And then they get into it and they're like, oh my God, I'm addicted now because I feel so much better just about my life. I feel oh, so yeah. Calm. Yeah. So I got into the fitness industry for that reason. And about six months into my first personal training job, I decided I wanted to be self-employed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just grassroots marketing. Like I was going to people's homes. I was passing out business cards. Just like, strangers like knocking on the door. Like, Hey, you want to come out here? I got some burpees for you. Get over right? here in the front yard. Yeah. Let's go. $5 burpees. And I'm out. Let's go. <laughs> no, just you laugh, that. but I mean, that's pretty close to it. I used to go to the local park. <laughs> that, like, that's amazing. I didn't know. And this is the beauty. Like I was so young and lost and like, I don't know, like people hang out at parks on Saturday for their kids soccer games. Like I'm sure they have nothing else to do for an hour. Like, Hey, come here. Let's that's, see how many push-ups you can do. That's incredible. What a, <laughs> that's, that, that, <laughs> thank, like imagine the guts to walk up to somebody and be like, yo, you could lose 10 pounds. Get over here. Pay me some money and I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> no, I mean, I know that's not what your pitch was, but like right. what, what a great trial by fire to just that's go exactly, pitch personal training to strangers. It's not exactly how I went about it. I'm like, <laughs> hey there, Patty, like let's get through this. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Just tell you, yeah, gosh, that's not what I did. No, I actually started working out at these parks and people would kind of like come over and be like, hey, are you a personal trainer? I'm like, Oh, that's so weird. You ask. Yes, I am. Oh, dude, that that's such a good point though. Like just doing the thing in public, like that's, that's actually really mm -hmm. good for like online presence and entrepreneurs right now, because just doing the thing publicly draws a crowd. Yeah. Like I was at a funnel hacking live right before the pandemic. Like it started yeah. literally the week after I left. Right. Yeah. And I was sitting there and a, and a guy introduced me uh, to this kid. He, I say kid, he's like 21, but like he was young and really just impressionable and like getting into the field. And he was just like what you said, like, I don't want to go to college. I don't know what I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to him and I was just in my zone. We were talking about online business and memberships and how, what he could do. I look up, there were seven people like standing around us by the end of the conversation yep. just because they heard what we were talking about in this little public cafe. And when you do things publicly, suddenly crowds come. But if you do it in your head, it's just you and your imaginary friends. Nobody comes around. Nothing so. happens. 
Yeah. yeah, no, that's so true. I used to meet so many people just working at coffee shops because they're like, do you just sit here all day? What do you do? Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask this. Do you ever have a hard time explaining to people what exactly you do? I used to. I, I think now, like we started back in 2012 online. So back then it was just like, I mean, people had no clue what we were doing when we quit our jobs and we went a full time online. But now I think people kind of see it and they'll say things like, oh, do you make money with Amazon or like things they've heard Etsy, right? And, you know, so they don't really know what we do as online content creators and course creators and things like that. But they kind of, it's kind of, kind of getting around, but I I never knew what to say until I got so far down into my mission that we're on right now that I could literally say, yes, I help people find and use their God-given talents to start membership websites. Like I can, I say it now and they kind of get it you know? So, but it's hard to figure that out in the very beginning, you know? Oh, in the beginning, like I used to just tell people, oh, I have a business. It's e-commerce. They're like, Mm. do you sell things on Amazon? I'm like, kind of. My mom is uh, almost, uh, she's 70. And she used to tell people the only thing she could wrap her brain around was Shane builds websites. That's what she tells people because she doesn't know what we're doing. She has no right. understanding of it. You know? Oh, he's a web developer. Oh, um, yeah. That's not what I do, mom. I have no clue how to do that. But whatever. Just go with it. That. I just let her tell him whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, well, so, okay. So that was the grassroots marketing. That's how it started. And very quickly, I had enough clients to just have a personal training business. And I loved it. I loved it. And every single day, I felt like, It's when you're doing something where you feel like somebody's going to find out what you're doing. And they're like, you can't actually, this can't be a job. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like it's just your your mission intersects your passion. And they're like, no, no, you got to get back on the hamster wheel. This is right. What are you doing with your life? You worked out for five hours today. That's right. I don't know how. (laughs) Yes, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Go away. Great. (laughs) Right. Um, I, so I started doing that and I was doing that for about four years and I loved it. I really loved it. But one of the things was I kind of felt like there was something bigger or more that I wanted to do. And it's not that, not to diminish the work that I was doing or the people that I was helping. It was just, I wanted to actually help more people. Yeah. And I was spending a lot of time, like trying to figure it out. This was about that same time. It was 2012, 2013. The online business thing was very new. A lot of people were doing affiliate marketing, ClickBank, things like that. Yep. And I had gotten an email. I don't know how I got on the guy's email list because I didn't know anything about email lists back then. And it was about how he was a personal trainer that went online. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, I wonder what is this all about? And long story short, it was back when, not back when, some people still do this. People were creating just digital eBooks putting them on ClickBank. And then they were in like these groups, these masterminds, and they were just selling their email lists, selling their affiliate stuff. And it was just this circle, which that concept never really made sense to me. Like I did it. I dove into it for about a year because I was like, all right, I could train people online. This makes total sense. Except for, for myself, something about it didn't, didn't quite hit home. Like this isn't really the capacity that I want to help people. Like, yes, you're in the fitness space and yes, you're making money, but it's from a very different way, almost like an MLM setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're selling to people just because you know, they're buyers, not because they're actually going to use the product and change their lives. I actually want to change people's lives. So you were not getting the impact like your mission. This is, is it's actually interesting because one thing we teach it a little different than most people do. Like everyone's like passions, passions, passions. Well, really you need a mission And then you figure out the passions that can support that mission. Mm -hmm. So even though you were doing the passion thing, you were, it was fitness, right? But like Mm -hmm. the mission was not being completed. The impact was not being felt. And yeah, it's great. You sell these courses and stuff, but nobody's doing it. So you don't really see the result and you don't get the high that keeps you going to the next person. So you're like, that's something else has to happen here. This isn't going to work basically. Yeah, exactly. Because like part of what fueled me so much in doing personal training was I had weekly interaction with my clients and I was watching them transform. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, you you sell a hundred eBooks and that's awesome. But then you find out that that exact same person just bought a hundred other eBooks. So, you know, they're just, you guys are just using, using the psychological perspective of a buyer. You just want buyers. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want buyers who are going to apply change their life and in some way be positively impacted with what they're learning. 
Um, but the beautiful thing is, is it taught me a lot about internet marketing. It taught me a lot about the online world and understanding just how it even works. So it was like my one-on-one education into like somebody clicks, somebody buys, here's how you do eBooks. Um, I did it for about a year and learned everything I could. And then I kind of took some space, did some soul searching. And I was like, this is not it. Like, this is kind of it, but this isn't really like, I don't feel right inside. And that's always what I use as my indicator, like your moral compass. And so I went back to it. I was with my clients and I was training and I'm like, there's gotta be something else that helps people. Like what problem can I solve? What can I do? And I like, I'm big into like visualization and law of attraction and all that. So at the time as a personal trainer, I think I was making maybe 40 grand a year. It wasn't anything crazy. And I like wrote out on a piece of paper. I was like, in one year, I want to be making a hundred thousand dollars online. I want it to be in fitness and I want to help people And I want to be able to work from anywhere. Like that's all I had. And I knew what I didn't want from this affiliate marketing stuff. Um, And I had nothing. And I just kept looking at it. And I'm like, there's got to be something like, and I always believe this because I used to coach entrepreneurs. And I was like, normally your answer is something you're probably already doing every single day, but it's 100%. Yes. It's so simple for you that you're like, this can't be it. There's no way. No way. That's the thing. Come on. Like, that's the thing you want. I I thought it was this thing you wanted, but that's the simple one. No, no chance. Right. We complicate it. And that's exactly what happened for years. And you can ask my family about this. Like I've been eating protein pancakes for like 10 years in my life because I love pancakes. I love breakfast food. However, when I got into the fitness industry and learned all about nutrition, I then like, I realized pancakes are bad. The, the, oh. Like if you could create the worst thing ever, it's <laughs> bread that you pour liquid sugar on. That's probably the worst yeah. thing you could ever put in your body, honestly. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> sugar, processed stuff, like yeah, a you know, butter. It's probably I, try not not, I try not to think about that at Cracker Barrel sometimes, but you know, we get our, oh my God. Anyway, right? that's what I always got though. Was the like, what was it? Big mama's breakfast or Big something? mama's breakfast. Just pile the bacon and syrup yep. on. Could you bring me another syrup? Those little bottles are not cutting it. So cracker barrel. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, that's really what happened is I was like, dang, pancakes aren't healthy. Well, that's a problem. So how do we do this? And I, I have a huge passion for baking. I've always loved one of my like love languages is I like making food that makes other people happy. Like it just makes me happy seeing they're like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And so I always made cakes and brownies and cookies and all kinds of things. But I was like, all right, there's gotta be a way that I can make this healthier. And I just tried out so many different recipes for myself. And I used to give it to my family. I'm like, this kind of tastes like a pancake. Right. And some of them were terrible. (laughs) You're like, uh, like, if you mean like a roadkill that got pancaked if that's what you're talking about yes it tastes just like that actually i mean <laughs> right? <be> like, <laughs> the syrup's not bad <laughs> um, right. there was one i remember my brother so first off my family's not into this stuff like they're really like no i'll take the real deal i don't care yeah right <laughs> there was one my poor brother is like my guinea pig with this i'm like please try it please and he's like ashley i hate this stuff i'm like i promise it's good and he ate it and I was like anticipating the like, this is really good. And he's like, do you know the texture of like a kitchen sponge? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I was like, no. He's like, it's it's not the flavor, but the texture, it's kind of the same. And I mean, this was years and finally, finally, I made one that when I get their stamp of approval, I'm like, if you guys eat this, I know this is the real thing except for I wasn't trying to make a product. I just wanted to make it for myself. So I'm talking four or five years. I ate the like perfected recipe and I never felt like I had to diet again. That was the thing is I was solving my own problem of not having to cut out food that I love by doing this. So while I'm trying to figure out this idea and what to do, um, one of my clients one morning was like, I got a question. I can't eat egg whites anymore for breakfast. Like they're terrible. They're bland. What do you eat? And I was like, oh, I eat pancakes every day. And they were like, why do you have me eating egg whites every day? <laughs> You've been holding out on me, Ashley. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, that, that's the secret. Oh man. Egg whites. You got I know. pancakes over there, right? Well, so I just put it in like a little Ziploc bag. Like I made all the little flowers and Stevie and all that. I was like, here, I add a whole egg and some water and mix it up and it would make you four pancakes. That's what I eat every morning. And it holds me over for like four hours. 
the next day I went through the training session. It was a guy actually. And he was like, can you make me like a week's worth of that? Because I oh, can man. do that. Yeah. And it was like in that moment where I'm like sitting there making my breakfast, I was like, oh my gosh, what if I turn this into a product and people actually buy it? But like, of course, I'm like, no way people are going to buy protein pancakes. You know what's amazing though? Like hearing this, hearing you tell the story, like going back just a few minutes ago, like, like so you were doing the one-on-one you got so much satisfaction because you saw them the result at the end of the workout. I mean, they literally are sweating and tired. And then you saw the transformation and then you get into this ClickBank affiliate world which no matter how legit it ever is, it always feels sleazy. I don't know why. Right? Click, sorry, ClickBank. I love you. I agree. But like, you know, it's just weird. And like, and then you, you do this and you realize, oh, people aren't using the things that I'm creating. They're not watching courses or e- reading the ebook. So then your brain kept clicks on this pancake thing. And you're like, wait a minute. If people buy pancakes, they will eat them. This is, this is the thing that everyone that buys the thing will consume it. I'm going in on pancakes, right? Yeah. I'm making a product. Yeah. No, I mean, well, from a business perspective too, I was like, if they buy an ebook, I got to cre- keep creating a bunch of ebooks. If they buy pancakes, they're going to run out and they got to rebuy pancakes. That's right. That's it's right. It's consumable goods. Like they got to yes. keep buying it. Um, that's how it started though. And I just remember like something in my gut. I was like, I actually think this is it. I have no idea. I'm a personal trainer. I don't have any background in food products or protein products or how to even sell something that's a physical, not digital good and like ship it to people. Is this even legal? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it's just legal. As long as, as long as it's just protein powder in there, making the mix, you know what I'm yeah. saying? There's other stuff you could probably put in there that would be illegal. So we're keeping it that way. Well, that's really- I mean, it was more of the, like, I'm doing nutrition. And I mean, I'll admit this on here. Like when I was first doing it, I was doing it on my own calculations using like nutrition software and then printing off sticker labels, putting it on these bags. And I'm like, should I get this like verified? Like, I don't. Hey, that's a great question. Cause something you don't, we never know. Like right. but, but that, that can't, that still can't stop you. Like you will no. figure it out when the FDA shows up or you finally find the article that tells you what to do. But right. like, it can't stop you, like, just because you don't know something, you know? Exactly. And I mean, that's the beauty of it is like, I always reflect back on this because in the beginning, I don't know if it's probably a combination of things. If I was so focused and excited about it, that I didn't care about how stupid something looked that I, cause I was just, I was committed. Like this is going to be something. You're throwing mix in a plastic bag and throwing it out the window with a sticker on it. Like here, take this and eat it. <laughs> you know exactly what happened no no joke so we're not at shark tank yet but before that when they talk about the price point because they were talking about how it was 39 dollars or whatever i was like listen here before i even had late and this was never on the episode this part just didn't air i was like i know that the price is not an issue because when i was writing the name with a sharpie pen on a plastic tub People would drive 20 minutes out of their way of town to come to my house to get them. Yeah. Buy this. Yeah. And I couldn't ship anything. I was like, so price is not a problem. They were like, you did what? Right. Exactly. Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's so funny. Everybody always gets, um, this, this goes back to the same. There's a lot of parallels here to like where entrepreneurs get stuck, whether it's online Mm -hmm. or off. You just get, people get so caught up in the details of like what their website looks like, um, their course looks like, their product, their logo, their whatever. And the problem is they wanted, someone just wanted something that didn't taste like paper in the morning. And this did that. They didn't care what it was wrapped in. That's like saying someone gives you, um, an, uh, you know, the latest, greatest iPad pro for Christmas and you throw it away because it was in a Walmart bag. Instead right. of wrapped perfectly. No, it does the thing. And that's all that really matters with the thing. Right. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with that more because like, there's so many times I hear people tell me their great ideas and they're like, but I don't know how to start. or I don't know where to go. I haven't found a manufacturer. I'm like that you'll figure all that out. Can yeah. you start right now? Can you do this like at home? And those things like- will get better. It, it will yes. always get better and easier and faster and more efficient and all that thing. But yep. you got to, you got to do the thing first. So let's, how did you get on? To, okay. So I, we'll, we'll kind of, I want to kind of like go back and forth in time a little yep. bit. Okay. So then probably this leads into it. How did you get 
on to Shark Tank. Like, I don't even understand how that works. And like, I know that there was a process of getting this productized and getting it better and then getting it noticed. But like, how does that, t- how do you go from filling tub with stuff and writing people's names with a Sharpie on it to making this into a product, getting it into a store or selling it online? And, and then how do you get on to Shark Tank? Was this a thing you tried or did you get noticed or like what happened? So I Googled it. Did you Google how to get on Shark Tank? Is that what you really did? That's literally exactly what I did. <laughs> so simple. Why did I do that? I should have done that before I got on the podcast today. I know. Everybody thinks like, oh my God, did you know somebody or did they call you or somebody sell your product? I'm like, no, one day I just Googled how to get on Shark Tank and That's something amazing. popped up and it was like, oh, so because when I ask people, they're like, oh man, like I've always wondered. I'm like, well, what have you tried? Oh, Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Right. Exactly. Right. I didn't look. That's why I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had. So the timeline was I started <laughs> writing these on tubs with a Sharpie from like April, May, actually, no, April, May, June, July. I was doing all this out of my kitchen 2014, then July, August, September. Um, you might not know who this is. Do you know who Dana Lynn Bailey is? I have no idea. Who is it? So Dana Lynn Bailey is like a huge, well-known bodybuilder. Like Mm. she's got millions of followers and just a very synchronistic event. She found my product somehow on Instagram or social media. And ironically, I'm the one that's filling these products, but because I was just like hustling, I was not paying attention and she bought it and made a social media post about it that I was not at all aware of. And I walked Wow. Yeah, I walked into the gym one morning and the girl at the front desk, because she knew what I was doing. She was like, have you been on social media today? I was like, what? No, why? And I opened my phone and I mean, just the orders came flooding through. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot make this in my kit. It was thousands of orders. Like there's no Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So that started, and this is what I do believe happens in entrepreneurship when you're ready. Again, you're doing things publicly. Yeah. Without a break. You're just putting it out there yep. so that you can be in the right place at the right time. You got to put yourself in the right place, people, to be in the right place at the right time because you don't get found if you're just not telling anyone about your pancakes, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, I was telling anybody and everybody that I knew yes. about this. And like my excitement became other people's excitement. The important thing, too, though, is I think people do one thing and then they sit there and they wait. And it's like, no, 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 just keep going. Don't yeah. pay attention. Like, don't get caught up. I think Google Analytics, statistics, everything in the beginning is so irrelevant because you're not getting traffic anyways. Like, that's exactly right. I just, listen. I got a successful. I have multiple successful online businesses. I still don't look at open rates. I just send right. the email. I don't care. Like, yep. how many sales came in? That's the number I'm looking at, right? And like, yep. get more emails. Send more emails. That's all I'm doing. So same thing. Yeah. You get, I actually think you slow down your momentum when you start getting too caught up in that because you're focused on the things that aren't making the impact. Focus yes. on what makes the impact. And then you don't have to worry about that. That's just all like side things. Um, yeah. So she launched me into the next step that I had to figure out is how do you find a manufacturer in fulfillment? Because I cannot do this on my own. And I went back to ironically the people that I knew through the ClickBank stuff, just because Mm. they were all in the fitness space. And I was like, Hey, does anybody know any kind of manufacturer for this? Like, this is totally new territory and I'm lost. And somebody did connect me to somebody they knew in California that they were like, Hey, I don't really know anything, but I know this guy also makes some protein products. So maybe he can help you. And it actually worked out very perfectly. And he lined me up with his manufacturer we had to do a ton of stuff with formulation, which I didn't even know you had to do, but I mean, it makes sense. If somebody is recreating your recipe, there's so many things you got to test. Yeah. Find out what's actually legal and not legal. <laughs> How not to poison people. That's good. That's right. always good. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah. We got to make sure there's no microbes or anything. That's probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. That. Probably a good plan. Yeah. So that happened, I think it was August, September. And I mean, that it was just a lot and everything was getting like put together the website. And then I had moved to California to figure it out, to be closer to the manufacturer. And while I was out there, I'm telling everybody like, Oh, what do you do? I have a protein pancake product. You should try it. 
And in one day, I think three or four people were like, you should go on Shark Tank. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's a cute idea. And so on a total whim with zero expectation, I Googled how to get on Shark Tank. Application came up. I filled it out literally like I think I only knew 50% of what they were asking me because I was like, I don't, I don't know my projections for next year. I don't even know what I'm making right now. I don't know customer acquisitions, average order value, all these things that when you're in it, you're like, Google, what is customer acquisition? Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, all I know is that stuff went to someone else and that much money's here. And that's pretty much it right now. I have that's no what clue what's happening tomorrow. And that's it. That's all I, got. I sold 10 bags. How does that work? Oh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, yeah. but I mean, really like that's what I did. And I just kind of laughed about it. And I was like, they're never, they're going to be like, what? This is a cute hobby. Like she's never going to get. Anywhere. And also too, like back then, um, I don't think in the beginning, like, or back at that time during Shark Tank, like they, they didn't have as many food products as they have now. Like yeah. it was, it was more inventions and patented things. And um, yeah. then there was this like wave of foods that really were successful. So the sharks were like getting more food people, you know, yeah. and there's more food on now. So back then there really wasn't as many things like this on Shark Tank. I agree with that. I don't remember seeing anything like that. Yeah, um, the first, there's all always sponges and hoses and, and scrub, like, daddy. scrub daddies and stuff like that it was mm -hmm. and then there was this move toward restaurant franchises and foods and like yeah and the, the sharks crushed them so they started adding more of those so i think that says like it's even more important to realize do the thing just because there weren't a lot of food just because you were new that doesn't you might get picked you just never yeah. know you know yeah i always tell people to follow their optimistic curiosity like <laughs> that's a great quote that's a great I'm just quote. Curious. Like, who knows? Like, go just go for it. Like, what if it does work out though? Like, that would totally change your life. But it's, I mean, it's just curiosity you're following. It's not an attachment. It's not like all your eggs are in that one basket. You're like, I don't know. I just want to see what happens. I, I I've done that before with uh, I tell you this is a because I, I mean, I think one thing from your story I'm hearing too. This is fascinating. It's like how j even doing the clickbait thing puts you in the right place where there were people you could ask about something later. So mm -hmm. even though it was a thing that not failed, but you were like, that's not for me, it opened doors. And yeah. I can't tell you how many times in our entrepreneur journey that I've been like, that person is going to be at that live event. And if I go to that live event, I'll at least have a chance to meet them. Yeah. And then I end up having dinner with them or something crazy. Yep. Like that has happened so many times to us. And like, I hear that in your story. It's like, well, I'm just going to apply. Nah, we'll see what happens. And yeah. then if it doesn't happen, it didn't happen anyway. You didn't have it before, but if it does happen, great. It's amazing. Right. Exactly. Well, and that's the whole thing too, of not being super attached to it, of just seeing what happens. Because even though I applied for that, I did not then stop what I was doing and sit around and wait until they called me back. Fingers crossed. I hope Shark Tank calls me. Now nah, you'll care right. at that point, right? Yeah, no, I totally, I was like, all right, done, moving on. What do I got to do next? Like keep moving forward. I got to figure this out. And I'm glad I did because I didn't hear anything back from them for six months. And I, I didn't care because I actually wasn't thinking about it at all. I was like, not surprised because I don't know what half the terms they're asking me are. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Ironically though, I was, it was February of 2015 and I was at a fitness business conference in Costa Mesa, California. And I had like a table, I was working on recruiting affiliates for my pancakes and I had a missed call from Los Angeles while I was there. <gasps> oh yeah. my gosh. I was like, LA, who's calling me from LA? Cause I had so forgotten about it and it had been so long. And she was like, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a producer with Shark Tank. I'm so sorry for the delay. And I'll, I was like ready to shut it down. I was like, pack it up. This is where all of our energy is going. Who cares? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Who cares? We, have, we have found the nail. Bring me a hammer right now. <laughs> Shark Tank. Yeah. Um, and I mean, she just, she walked me through the process. It was a very tedious, stressful process. And every after situation... they accepted your application, you got to go through more rigorous, like, I guess, like, app, like, do they, do they, they, they audition you to make sure you're going to be like good for television? Do they do yeah. anything like that? Or what do they do? Yeah. So when you finally get to film, they make it very clear that you're not allowed to talk to other entrepreneurs there, which sucks because like, talk about networking, you want oh, to yeah. talk to these people but you sign confidentiality that you won't because everybody has a different process of how they got there. 
Mm. So they're like, we don't want people to find out that I submitted an application and a couple YouTube videos when the person next to you had to go to three live casting calls and like basically go through the gauntlet. Yeah. I didn't even know there were casting calls. So my process was I filled up the application, submitted it. She called me back. And then I had to submit, I think, two or three rounds of different videos. And they weren't necessarily auditions. They're terrible. They're somewhere online on YouTube because of, we had to upload it to a YouTube link. I'm in my kitchen. I'm wearing like a tank top and gym clothes. And I'm cooking, <laughs> I'm cooking pancakes up. I'm like cooking it up and I actually mess up like the first time and, and they don't want retakes. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Hold on one second. Like, Starting over. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Don't tell me if it doesn't go right. It's okay. Um, it's like a 20 minute, just talking like this where I'm like, so I started this out of my kitchen. Here's my intention. I don't know how many people ordered. I don't know how much it costs to make. <laughs> My That's price amazing. came from like a total guess, like a tub of proteins, 40 bucks. This is a tub of protein. So it sounds right. Like everything was so just, I'm clueless. I'm not afraid to tell you that I'm clueless. If you pick me great, if you don't, I'm just going to keep doing this anyways. And again, I submitted it and I was like, no way. I think I messed up like five times. And they're like, Hey, we love this. Like you were so genuine. We want to do this again. And I'm like, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great. Cause you were thinking they may not let me watch shark tank anymore after that video, let alone be right. on the show. Right. I might cause my business to fail by sticking in this video. <laughs> I got to get this offline before somebody <laughs> copies it. This is ridiculous. Right. No, seriously. And they loved it. And then the next thing was they were like, all right, so now we need like actual paperwork for your business, which that intimidated me more than anything, because yeah. they would send it, say it's Monday. They would send you probably about the equivalent. Like when you buy a home, just stacks of paper, They're like, okay, so if you can get this back to us within 24 hours, if you don't, it might disqualify you moving to the next round. And you're like, 24 hours. Okay. I got this. I don't know what any of this is. And I remember I was, cold. I'll make a bunch of pancakes and not sleep. And I'll just <laughs> eat pancakes and fill out paperwork all day. That's, oh my God. No joke though. That's what it was. Like every day I just remember coming home and I was like, it's never going to stop. Like it just keeps happening, <laughs> but you're so scared. You're like, but also I kind of love it because my opportunity just keeps opening up and I want to keep following this for sure. Um, so yeah, so I did all of that. The background they do on you is insane. I remember somebody from their legal department called me and they were like, hey, we just want to verify that 1995, this was your street address. I was like, 95? I don't even know. I think so. Okay, <laughs> well, was your car, the, in, like, I don't know how they find out all this stuff. Do you know my high school boyfriend? Do you know who my best friend was? Like, they do such an extensive background check, financial check. Um, well, they got they got to make sure that nobody slips through on the because you know how the world is today. Yeah. Like the wrong person goes on Shark Tank, and now they're associated with Shark Tank forever, and now they're a criminal or they're whatever. And now it's like, oh my gosh, we can't even have a show anymore because the world turns against us, basically. Right now they're branded with Shark Tank. Crap. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was just weeks of doing that. And then as you continue to progress, the, like the first in-person thing was we had to sit through a legal briefing at Sony Studios. So that in itself was like surreal because you pull into like the Sony lot, you've got all the different sets up there. And then you sit in front of the entire board and all the producers for like three hours and they're just walking you through the process. Everybody signs paperwork that you will not talk to anybody about what's going on. Um, if you make it all the way to filming, even this actually happened. Even if you film, you get a deal. You cannot tell anybody about that until you get released from the network. So you like, you walk off set and like, I got a deal. And I'm like, I can't tell anybody. Oh I yeah. Can't. You can't tell your parents or your friends or no. like, you just gotta be like, just keep on making pancakes guys <laughs> right like you know i mean it's no, like I, do exactly. they let do they let you tell your team nope oh, that's crazy like so no. you can't even go and like tell like the people who are about to ramp up and their life is about to go crazy because they're going to make so many more sales that to get nope. ready because it's coming you just got to be like, just, like 
sitting around. As this is usual, waiting for the show to come out. That's all, oh, man. That's nuts. I don't know. It, it was so stressful. It was so stressful because like you want to follow the rules because if they find out that you told anybody or he made a social media post it or anything. ruin the deal. Like, yeah. Right. Then they're like, hey, we can't actually air this now because you signed this and then you broke the rules. But at the same time, you want to like ask for help of like, hey, is there anybody I can talk to? Because I'm freaking out here. So what they do is when you film, the process is they let you know that there's no guarantee you're going to air. They now have to complete filming for that season first. Then they submit them all to ABC. ABC has to buy your segment. So even a lot of people don't know this. You have like 25 entrepreneurs, I think, per season. Out of that, maybe only 15 of them air. Wow. Whether you, yeah, whether you get a deal or not, you film, you do the whole process. And I mean, you might not get the exposure, which sucks, but yeah. it happens. And, and aren't the, the interviews are so condensed, but you're in the tank for a long time making the pitch, right? It's not like yeah. the five, 10 minutes that they show on, on the air. Like you're talking to them for quite a while. You know? Yeah, I I think when we got off, when you're in it, it feels like five minutes. When you get off and the producer's there, you're like, how long were we in there? I think I was 47 minutes, they said. Wow, that's crazy. And they cut that down to like a four minute clip. Isn't that amazing how it's good crazy. at editing those people are? Well, the other thing that's crazy is you don't know what airs until the rest of the world knows. You don't get to see it or anything. So you're watching it while everybody else watches it. And you're like, really? I, they don't yeah, even like send like, you a preview or anything or like let you come nope. in and check it out? Wow. Nope. That's so you have Gosh, no idea. Like, is, it, is it three minutes, five minutes? Um, what they do though, is they send you, if ABC buys your segment two weeks prior to your air date, they send you a release that you can now tell people. You can tell people it's a pre-release. So you get two weeks to ramp up inventory, make sure your website can handle the traffic spikes, tell your friends and family, make social media posts. It's insane. Mine happened... I got the email like December 18th because I was the first episode in January, which in the weight loss world was great. Oh yeah. Perfect. And the manufacturing world was a nightmare because nobody's working <laughs> during Christmas and new year. Oh my I'm, gosh. I'm getting, I'm, I, I, I am getting anxious. I, I feel like I'm about to have, I feel like I'm about to have a panic attack <laughs> listening to you tell this story. I have chills up my spine and goosebumps on my arms. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go take a nap because this is like, <laughs> this is freaking me out. And it happened to you years ago. <laughs> it was so stressful. Oh my it, gosh. It was so stressful. Well, because you're trying to convince people to care as much about your area as you do. So when you're calling manufacturers and they're like, we're away with our families for Christmas. And you're like, you don't understand what is happening. What's about to happen. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, it was insane. But even so I filmed in June, I didn't get that email till December. <gasps> so I'm sitting there for six months. Like, so is this real? Is it not real? Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? During that six months, nothing happens. Your business is just like normal as if that whole thing was just a far dream. Wow. Very so, weird. so, okay. So, so you go through the process and you get picked to be on the show. So let's reverse back in time. Then we'll come back to the launch. Huh? Um, how did you, how do you prepare for the pitch? Like, did you rehearse it a million times? And like, you, did you go make packaging? Cause you were still kind of doing it in tubs and this, that, and the, other. like, I'm sure you had a gap there where you were like up, upgrading everything. But like, what's it like, like, did you get to meet the sharks before you even walked out there or literally the door opens and there's Damon, John, Mr. Wonderful and Mark Cuban and Lori and like, like what happened? How did you prepare for the pitch? And then did, is that literally how shark tank works? You walk into the tank and they're sitting there. So to prepare for the pitch, once you get through a certain round of the auditions and the process. Each category gets assigned a different producer. So there is two specific producers that were in charge of fitness and food products. So they reach out to you. They get on calls with you every single week. They tell you to write your pitch. So you write it and they give you tips for it. Then you'll get on a call. You do it in real time. So kind of like role playing. And then they give you feedback of like, all right, you need to cut it down. That was 90 seconds. It needs to be this. You should probably cut this out. Um, and you do that for a few weeks and then That's it just, good. Becomes, yeah, it becomes rehearsal. And then even all the way up to when you're behind set and you haven't actually gone in yet, 
they're backstage. Your producers are with you of like, all right, let's run through the pits. Let's do this again. Okay. Let's work on this. Like they're trying to coach you through it. Um, to segue into your other part of that question, that is all very real. You do not meet the sharks that you don't even see them until those doors open. And what you see on TV. <laughs> God, that's crazy. Ash. That's so, nuts. I remember. So that day was so stressful because I remember standing backstage and they tell you, they're like, Hey, if the entrepreneurs before you take too long, we run out of time and you don't film and that's it. Goodbye. That's it. <gasps> oh my God. So you're back there. Like, please hurry up, please. Like, I don't know what time it is. Like I want to film, but for me, because I was a food product, I got a three minute heads up that I had to cook up all my pancakes and they had to be perfect because that's what I was taking on set. So you're like, please hurry up. Remember my pitch. I get three minutes to make the world's best pancakes. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, I mean, all of this is very real and you're just like PC and like, okay, breathe. Don't freak out. I thought what was going to happen. So thank God the pancakes, they were perfect. They cooked up perfect. I was so happy and so grateful, but I'm standing behind. They take us over to where those doors are that you see on TV. And I thought what was going to happen was there was going to be like 30 seconds of just complete silence that I could like get myself together, compose myself and like walk out there confidently. No, what happened is you're behind there. You have about 30 seconds. Somebody's lint rolling you. You have hair, makeup, camera guy, lights are coming down. Somebody is counting down out loud from 10 seconds. So you're like 10 seconds, we're going down. And you're oh like, Oh my God, I'm serious. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I cannot explain what my spine feels like right now. <laughs> like I am so nervous right now. Like I can't even, I feel like it's back. I've somehow fell into a time warp and I have landed in the shark tank set and I'm watching you go through this and it's making me freak out. So. That's no, you're trying. That's how it is, is you want to get like everybody off of you. And they, there's no time because it's like two seconds before the doors open and they all disappear. And then you are just walking through, you see the car, you see the carpet spot. Cause there's a little spot. You have to find your cue. And then the sharks are just staring there completely. Like, we don't know who you are. We don't know what your business is. They know nothing about you. Wow. And you've got to wait there for like 30 seconds because they have to adjust the lights and the camera. So like you're there and you're just smiling and staring that is the like, weirdest scenario that humans could ever create i'm just gonna call it right now it's yeah. so awkward it's so awkward because the sharks are not smiling yeah well they're, they're there like, to spend some money man they're ready to go right you know? another day another entrepreneur what do you got like let's hear they're not nervous when you're just like trying not to like have a heart attack and they tell you one take we don't stop rolling so if you mess your pitch up there's no redo so you're just like okay I'm actually Germans from Tampa, Florida. I have a product. Like you're just repeating. You're like, and you don't want to be the one that, you know, cause some people on every once in a while, they'll show someone that messes up their pitch and you don't want to be that. You don't want to be the, the American idol singer that can't hold a tune. You don't want to be right. that person, right? <laughs> like you want to go out there and do this right. And if you don't get a deal, that's fine, but at least you did it right. Right. And yeah. You know? Yeah. That was the main thing. I was like, if I can get through the pitch, I can handle Q and a for me. Is Conversation. Fun. Yeah. That's just fun. You right. Know? So like we got the guy in the back, the cue, he was like, go ahead. And it was like, just like spit it all out. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. We've made it. Like, let's do it. this. Yeah. So, so what the, the conversation then with the sharks, mm -hmm. um, like how, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't want to, people can watch the show if they want to get into the, the nitty gritty of how it happened. Like, so when you were about to, like, when you were negotiating back and forth, did you have more than one offer or was it just one? How many offers did you get? I want to tell you, but I don't want to tell you if you watch it because there is a twist. I had two offers. That's right. Okay. So what did it feel like though when the first offer came? We won't get into it. We can talk about it. But like like when you finally, when you got the offer, because that's got to be like, again, another moment where you're like, all right, I made it to Shark Tank, but am I really getting a deal here? And then you hear a number come out of one of the shark's mouth. I mean, at that point, are you yeah. like, I'll take it. Or you're like, wait, wait, maybe I should negotiate. Like, like what's the game plan there? Like when you hear that, you know, like, because I mean, you feel like I, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, is a shark tank a winner? Do you win shark tank? You get a deal. on shark tank. Like, what do you call yourself when you get a deal? But how did you feel when you heard that first? Uh, I offer? was so excited. And I almost did that because at first I went in, I asked 40% for 120 grand. 
my first offer was from Robert and it was 50% for 120 grand. Mm. And I was in that place where I was like, do I just take it? I don't know what to do right now. Like, I don't know. I'm always, I'm always under the impression, like when I'm watching Shark Tank and of course I would fall <laughs> apart like a jelly ball. It was, I was actually on it, but I'm always like, take a shark. That's got to be good for you. There's no way that anything that they say can be bad for you. Right. But like, no way to lose so you get the deal, you get the offer from Robert. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I got it. And, but I did not want to do 50%. That was the thing. Yeah. So, um, at the time, the guy that was with me, I like kind of looked at him. So I was like, do you walk off shark tank and not take a deal because it's 50%? Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So I countered and I asked for 49. I was like, at least give me majority. Ownership, right. Yeah. Yeah. And he was super on the fence and he was like, mm, I really want to do 50. And in that he was the only offer that I had. And I was so, I was like, I kind of want to walk away, but I kind of want the deal. I don't really know what to do. And then Damon, like Damon. Saw, so fortunately Damon and Mark actually started defending me with Robert. Like, because I didn't know what to do. And they were like, Robert, why are you going to do that? She's a hardworking girl. She's yeah. trying to get her business up there. Are you going to do 50% of the work? And I, I appreciate that. I needed that. Cause I was like, yeah, Robert. Like, yeah, Robert. <laughs> what are you, you're not going to be making pancakes. You're going to be eating them. Right. <laughs> right? But I, like, I needed somebody to kind of stand in my corner because I was so ready to just take anything that I was kind of like, wait a minute. They're kind of right. Are you going to do 50% of the work? Like what's happening? And a lot of it didn't air, unfortunately. That was very humorous. That kind of happened behind all of that. Um, I was not going to take it if Damon had not come in. Like, I would have walked off of it just because I was like, I don't want to do 50%. And I think, not I think, I know, because we've I've had conversations now with Damon about it, is he saw how on the fence I was and didn't want me to give away that much of my business. And last minute, he came in of, Hundred and twenty thousand for forty two percent, and I was like, "So deal." That's amazing. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. that's awesome. And then, and so all right, so you get the deal, right? And now you're walking out, and where a few months before you were like whimsically filling out an application that you could barely understand, and now yeah. you have Damon John behind you, like as a business like investor in your pancake company. Like this is this right. is the stuff that like. And, and, but, I, but the best part about it is, Ashley, like you can talk about falling forward and just keep taking the next step and doing all the things. But what I love about this opportunity and I love about your story is this happened because you didn't stop taking action. Mm -hmm. you ne it's not like you your expectations were perfectly aligned the whole way. Like it may not happen, but it might. And yeah. it's just so inspirational to hear that, like, because there's people that will listen to this. I know how some people are, the cynics out there, and they're like, oh, well, she got lucky and she just kept getting lucky. No, that's not true, because you're accusing someone of being lucky hind in, didn't fill out the application, didn't take the next step, didn't show up, yeah. didn't give in to fear. And that's why at the end, Damon John says, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to see you this, see this through, you know? Yeah, so, even... Well, I mean, just to, for anybody listening, even as a backstory, that was not the only thing that I ever tried. That's just yes. the first thing that worked out. I mean, I reached out. There was another TV show at the time that I applied to in LA and I can't, it was called something like Food Gold or something. It was a pilot right. series and I went and filmed for that. I had no idea what it was. Same thing that I was like, I don't know, but I'm going to give it all my God, all that I've got. And you threw spaghetti on the wall and found a noodle. The stuff. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I tell people like keep throwing darts. Eventually one's going to be a bullseye, but you don't just throw one and you're like, Oh, well, that wasn't it. I guess like I should just stop. Like, well, even, even into the pitch, like that happened to you because like you've got the dart that sticks in Robert, mm -hmm. but then it's like not perfectly hanging there. And yeah. you had an opportunity through the conversation for Damon to jump in. You know, yeah. those opportunities come from nowhere. Like guys, I can't imagine just trying one thing and it working like that's just, just, I've never seen that happen in anybody's life and anyone who's successful, anybody I've ever talked to on this show or my other show, it just doesn't happen that way. Like you just throw a lot yeah. of darts and something finally sticks. And that's what you did.
Yeah, I think the thing is a lot of people see the dart that's stuck. They don't see all uh, the there it is. on the ground. Yeah, you don't see the 400 that are on the ground beneath the dartboard. Like, you don't see the one that you stepped on, the one that fell on the ground, you stepped on it, and it's six inches up in your heel. Like, you yeah. don't see all those darts, the ones that hurt and sting. and, yep. and right. So, all right, so you're walking out of the tank, you got a deal. Like, one, how does how do you feel walking out of the sh- out of the tank? Um, which I'm sure is ecstatic, but I just want to see like your thought, what was going through your head. And then like, what happens after you get a deal on shark tank? Like, do you meet with Damon weekly or quarterly, or do you meet with his team or like, like how, what's, what, ha- I'm sure they have to sign a bunch of papers and do some vetting, uh, a little bit more vetting afterwards to close the deal. But mm-hmm. like, so what was the feeling walking out? And then what was the next couple months looking like setting everything up? Yeah, walking off set, I remember, so they immediately usher you on to a mock set, that post-interview you kind of see after somebody's on there, because they want your immediate reaction. So you're like, how do you feel? What was that like? Damon K, you're like, I don't know. I haven't really processed everything right now. I'm kind of just in shock that this is even happening. And that's really how it felt. Like, you're so ecstatic because you feel like it's a year and a half long that it took to get to that point. But also this thing that only you saw that you believed in is like somebody just validated you like big time. You got validated. So you're like, all of this started because I was making a pancake mix in my tiny apartment. And like, how in the world did I get here? So a lot of that was happening. But quickly after that, they take you back to the green room. You then have to sit with a psychiatrist who has to sign off that you're not going to lose your mind because of what just happened, because they have had that happen a lot. Yeah. Um, people just totally abandon their families and everything and run away because they think like, this is it. So they're like, we just want to make sure like you're of sound mind to leave this and like go back to normal life. Yeah. Um, so that was a process. Somebody from Damon's team comes back in the green room and we shine, we shined, we signed a no shop agreement that during the due diligence process, I wouldn't take on any other investors. Um, and then there is a process of due diligence where you almost go through the exact same thing all over again, except for mm-hmm. now it's directly with whoever you got the deal with. So their people, their advisors, their board can look at all the paperwork, like what's your marketing plan? What's your customer acquisition? What's your profit? What are your cost of goods? So that in itself took like another two to three months of just going back and forth and figuring that out. After that was done though, and they kind of agree like, yeah, you have a legitimate business. This looks like a good situation. They kind of just let you know, like, well, we'll see if ABC buys your episode. Well, and I mean, they always find out first. So Damon, a couple weeks before I got the email, we got on a call and he was like, I'm pretty confident they're going to buy your episode. He's like, so yeah, you don't, I, so that, so really then. I mean, I guess you have the deal, but the deal can't start until the actual airing of the show, because mm-hmm. even even they really can't start coaching you then. They can't put the time in because like so if your air, if your episode doesn't end, you still have the deal. That's the thing is right. like, then they can start coaching you. But at, but until that point, you're just in total limbo and you've got this business partner who you're not allowed to talk to. That's yeah. Crazy. You have like this entire Rolodex of this connections and resources and you can't do anything with it other than just wait around. The other thing is too, the part of it is because the whole phenomena of when you air on Shark Tank is it then creates a domino effect of a lot of other people who air at the same time as you. So they have to work around that. So like, for example, literally like a week after it aired, then everybody else under Damon's portfolio who aired, it was like, all right, next week, everybody's going to St. Pete. We've got HSN and we've Mm. also got this going on. So like, it's got some sort of rhyme or reason to it, but they can't really give you any of that until they get that confirmation. So it's not just you, it's also them. They're like, we don't know who's doing HSN. We don't know who's airing next week. We don't really know who to help right now and who not to. So it's a God that was 2014 all the way into 2016 of just like a never, never ending process. Yeah. Yeah. So once you get past shark tank, once you get past all this, like it is pretty cool that like, I'm sure like some of those questions, like if you don't know the answer, what's amazing is when they, when in that due diligence process, they're like, okay, well you don't know this, but this is where like Damon's team can help you. Like they, they find the holes where they need to come in, not just with the money. I'm sure. 
and like have advice or have things or like, are they like, Hey, like, do you get support from them or is it still, all right, you've got the capital now, but you're the entrepreneur. You got to make these calls. Do you have access to like, like what happened after that? Like now, now you're yeah. literally working with Damon John shows out your moment in the sun comes and it's like on fire. Like, are you working with them or do you have support or like, or do they give you a so, lot of freedom to make moves on your own? Everybody has a very different setup. Even ones there's a Gino three jerks jerky. Have you ever heard of them? I think so. I think they so. Make, yeah. They do the filet mignon jerky. Oh yeah. Yeah. I totally remember that. Yes. Yeah. So they were back set. We filmed at the same time. So we've done a lot of the similar things together because they also did a deal with Damon. Oh, they, no, have, I, they kind of bulk you together. So the same things are happening yeah. at the same time. Got it. Um, they have a very different setup with Damon than I do. And everybody's situation is unique. So for me, the way it's structured with Damon is if he brings me business, he gets a percentage of that business. So gotcha. yeah. So we have a different kind of partnership set up in that he doesn't come in. He doesn't take over the business. His team doesn't come in, but they are there if I need them. So like if I send an email right now, and actually this was a lot of what would happen. Um, like I was trying to get into bodybuilding.com for the longest time and I just could not get through to anybody. So I would send an email to Damon's team of like, Hey, do you have any connections at bodybuilding.com? I'm trying to get through. They would then make the email, the introduction, the setup, but we have the agreement that if they do that, they now become part of the deal and they get commission and percentage off of that. That's fascinating. So, That's absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that like the skill set of the entrepreneur is going to determine that. Like you are like me, I can tell. Like you're just super energetic. Like the more you talk, the more you're around people, the more relationships you can build, the more fuel to the fire that it adds. Yeah. But someone else might be like my wife, Jocelyn, who's like the puppet master behind the strings, you know, running the systems, running the teams, efficiency. Like she's in there right now making a spreadsheet, like right now, (laughs) right? You know, like, so that's going to dictate how the team looks and how your relationship with the shark actually works. You know, speaking of spreadsheets, I appreciate people like your wife because I cannot get myself to do anything like that. I can't. (laughs) I know I have to hire people to do that. Like totally. Yeah. I told you this. It drains me. Yes. Like even my calendar, I I actually, this is, this is the best thing I've learned as a CEO in the last, like so many years. I, uh, I hired this amazing person. Her name's Angela. She's going to hear this and be like, Oh God, he's talking about me on the air again. Cause she's like Jocelyn. She just wants to be over here doing her thing, you know? But like, I finally realized I was like, I should not be in charge of my calendar. Like that's, that is not my skill set. It is not what I should be doing. I should just yield this to my executive assistant and say, I'll wake up. You tell me where to be at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, give me a, yeah. give me an email and let me know what I got to do that day and just work it around this stuff. And yeah. that's what happens every day. And I've never been happier in my entire life. I don't think I've put anything on my calendar except junk in months, <laughs> <laughs> right? but, but it gives day. her joy to, ta- to everybody's calendar. When she sees those check marks beside it, it gives her like, ah, peace and tranquility, right. you know? Yeah. Some people are super organizers and it makes them happy for me. Like that's the worst job you could ever give me. So, uh, so I'm sure of course things blow up after you go on shark tank, you just can't get that much attention without good things not happening. And your job is to not break it (laughs) at that point. (laughs) Don't mess up. Yeah. Don't mess up at that point. So like what advice would you give for shark bait out there? Like other people who are like trying to get the deal like on Shark Tank or trying to forget getting on it. We know how to get on it. We talked about that. But like, is there anything you would have done a little differently or been more prepared for going into the tank that you think could have helped you uh, to do a better deal, to have a better situation or even afterwards? Like, like what, what advice would you give to somebody? Like I'm going, let's say I'm going on Shark Tank in three months and you're like, Shane, you got to do X, Y, Z. I should have done this. I would say I would go into now if I got another opportunity, which by the way, I have reapplied just for the sake of seeing like, I wonder if I can do it again. I got an idea. We got (laughs) to pull that one out of the bucket. Let's see what happens. Right. Could I do it twice? Maybe that optimistic curiosity. Um, (laughs) This time biscuits. Here we come. Let's go. Protein biscuits. Right. (laughs) These you could probably throw at the wall. They're pretty terrible, but I do have a pancake brand. You should check that out. Check that out. Right. Exactly. Um, If I went into it again, I didn't really know this. Just, I mean, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. 
I would go into it with a lot more fun and for the pure experience and the exposure and not looking at it as this is going to fix all my business problems. Uh, or make or break you. Like if I yep. don't get the deal, my, my, my business is over kind of deal. Yes. Because I definitely had that mindset going into it of like, this is it. This is my big break. This is what I, and I mean, it is a huge break. Um, but after that, and especially now, cause it's been, there's been time and I've looked at it and we have like a Facebook group that all of us are in. So like sharing stories with each other, if I did it all over again. Yeah. I would just have a blast with it and go into it of like, I'm going into this for the PR, the exposure and the business that is going to come from this. But this experience right here, this is just fun. Yeah. That's a, wait, did you say there's a Facebook group where all the Shark Tank people hang out and it's like the secret, you're in a secret <laughs> Shark Tank society tank somewhere where there's just a bunch yeah. of people. That's amazing. What, a, <laughs> what, a, that alone, I don't forget the deal. Like just to be in the group of people who made it on air in Shark Tank and yep. just to, that, that's got to be a fire group, man. Oh, that's awesome. It, it is. Um, it's kind of funny more than anything. Like, honestly, like some people you use it just for like, Hey, does anybody know anything about, uh, like HSM? Like I'm going on HSM the first time. Does anybody have advice? It's things you can't talk to anybody else about really. It's just yeah. bizarre conversations and questions that no one else would get at that point. Yeah. Like well, that's why it got created because people were trying to figure stuff out, but they're like, I don't, I can't ask anybody about this. Like who else has gone through this experience? Most of it too, though, is kind of humorous because some of it will be like, Hey, so how many times have you had somebody steal your logo and brand and put it on Amazon? How do you do with that? <laughs> yes. yes. Because of Shark Tank. So like, I actually am not that active in it because that's most of what it is. Um, but it's, but really it's, it's also fun though. That That's a, that's a fun yeah. thing it, to be a part of, you know, yeah. is like a little family like that of some people who've been through a unique experience together. Like I, yeah. you, you, like this happens with like, uh, like those pro, like masterminds where people will hold an yeah. event for like 50 people in like a tropical place. Like you never forget it. It's just, those are your people that went through that with you and like, or whatever, yeah. you know, you go to a live event you meet a bunch of people and they're in there together, you know, but like, that's a unique thing that you get to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, it's no really matter what happens. It's interesting too, hearing other people's experience. Some people have some crazy stories of what happened with their experience that I like, you always hope for the best, but you're like, Oh my gosh, I, are you okay? Like, yeah, I, right. <laughs> exactly. You know? Did they, do they give you the entire recording or just the edited part? Like, do you have the whole pitch uh, on that you can go back and like, look at like yourself? Cause they don't, I have it. it. They don't give it to you though. I have it because I had saved it with, it used to be on YouTube and then. When oh, Shark, I see. Yeah. Shark Take went all on Hulu. So they stripped them all from YouTube. So when they put it on YouTube, I just saved it. So I have the site. I gotcha. So the whole pitches can be watched. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know that you could do that. Yeah, all right. So, so this is, yeah, you're amazing, Ashley. This has been, <laughs> this, this conversation's amazing. Like this has blown my mind. And I know this is going to be like so fun for people who love the show to like listen to and hear it behind yeah. the scenes. But like, you know, we're entrepreneurs. This ain't it. Shark Take oh. ain't it for Ashley. Right. <laughs> so like. So what's next? Like, what do you want to do? Um, you know, building on success, building, you know, you know, the first thing, no matter how big it is, is your foundation, right? It's your mm -hmm. cornerstone, but it's, but what do you do with a foundation? You build on top of it, right? Yeah. So like, what, what do you, what is next for you? How do you want to take the momentum from this? That's already impacting people. And like, what do you want to do next? Like, what do you want to turn this momentum into? to impact more people, influence more people and help more people in the world. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things I've been doing is I do have a podcast. It's called Phoenix Rising. And the reason for that is because like, I just love the transformation process with people. So it's really all about the mindset behind everything. So I talk about entrepreneurship, about just fitness, nutrition, and like how you really have to learn how to train your brain before you do anything else and learn how Amen. to risk. Yeah. Yeah. So the podcast is huge. I love it. Like we were talking about before we got on here, like that's my favorite thing because it feels like I'm connecting to my audience and my customers directly instead of through an email or a social media post. Yeah. Um, so I really love that. The other thing I want to do, which is what I originally reached out to you for is I really want to start a membership based around workouts and helping people from that, because that is something 
I'm grateful for the business, but what I miss the most is the connection with seeing people through the transformation process. Yeah. So that's something that I want to work through really hard. And I've even like, I've kind of thrown it out there to my audience just with an email of like, Hey, I got a question. What do you need the most help with? Where are you struggling? And I mean, every single one, men and women, they're like, I want to lose weight. I want to build lean muscle. And I'm tired of feeling like I'm doing this alone. I'm like, perfect. I want to. Create <laughs> oh, <community."> that's funny. <laughs> I have a membership where you can do it together. Right. Great. Yeah. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I want to do that. And I want to do it with a lot of different things, like workouts they can do with me because I want to be part of it. I actually, I'm not looking to like remove myself from the business. I want to be a part of it. Otherwise, like it's just another ClickBank product. Like I don't that's want right. that. Um, so those are my two main things that I'm focused on right now. A lot of people have asked, like, are you going to create more products and like more mixes? And I started to back in 2017, but honestly, like, that's just not where my heart is. Like the pancakes are helping people. And I love the response that I get from it of how many people have lost weight and how it does help them feel like they're not dieting or being deprived, but that's such a small piece to a much bigger picture of what I want to do. So that's where I'm at now that I really want to build off of. That's amazing. You know, I remember when we started our journey, I was, I always felt very fortunate that I had, that me and Jocelyn had each other because mm-hmm. we, we didn't, I hear that so much. Like, and, and don't get me wrong. There were times me and her together felt really alone trying to figure yeah. all this stuff out. But I know that the difference happened when we got into community with other entrepreneurs, right? Mm-hmm. And we saw this, the different, like we had a website called elementarylibrarian.com. And the elementary librarian is the loneliest person in the school. Like, I mean, they've, it's, there's one of them literally in every school. Right. Yeah. So Jocelyn built this huge community of like over a thousand elementary librarians and like paying her every single month for her resources. And, but the, the thing they loved was they had a place to go talk about it being library. Yep. So when we started these membership spaces and we started to going down the membership rabbit hole, the cool thing we figured out was, yeah, you can have a great product. That's the anchor of it or the draw, like whether it's a course or pancakes or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But when you add community and you add yep. leaders who are on mission and passion for those people, that's when impact and influence can really blow up. And it's not possible in any other business model. The membership model lets you do that. Like, can you imagine yeah. like not only doing workouts, but having live meetups where everybody, right. like, like where you serve everyone protein pancakes in the morning and then you work out together. <laughs> like that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, no, perfectly I actually, positioned to do that. Like you joke about that, but like, so two things I really want to do. And part of it is because like you do podcasts with other entrepreneurs, you learn this, like one of the biggest things with women. And I was on another woman's podcast yesterday. And after we got off her and I were just chatting, I was like, how can I help? Like, what do you need the most right now in your business? And she's like, really? I just get really frustrated and discouraged because I'm at home. I'm a single mom. I do this by myself. And one of the other passions that I have is I want some sort of like, I was like, like a morning coffee or something like that. For other female entrepreneurs, when you're doing it by yourself behind a community or a computer that you have some sort of support system, Mm. because like you said, when you have that, it's not that they have the answers to all your problems. It's just that you have people doing it with you that you can be like, Hey, is anybody else having kind of a rough day? How do you handle this? Or like, Hey, what, what do you do when you get no response from your emails? Like, does that discourage anybody else? Like, So that's another thing that I'm super passionate about is wanting to create some sort of space like that for entrepreneurs. Not necessarily I'm trying to help you like teach you business, but I just want to give you a safe space to connect. Uh, Yeah. Hey, listen, if you, when you're an entrepreneur for long enough, you know, it's not always the business thing that's causing the problem. It's the, I haven't slept for eight days in a (laughs) row or my kids are crazy or man, my spouse Really? I mean, that's what it is. And when you yeah. create these community, the, my, our, it's so funny, like our community, when we hear them talk about things, even the librarians and the football coaches I used to lead, nobody talked about the thing. Nope. They talked about the other things. And you just don't get that in a ClickBank course, right? I'm so glad you said that because for so long, because I never got on the ClickBank train, I was like, am I going to make it in the online world if I don't do this? Because these guys are making millions of dollars 
But this just feels, I'm so glad you said that. I was well, like, I'll tell you one thing. I've, ma- I've made millions of dollars too. And I scale service and I scale community right. and I scale leadership because if you do it, you can totally do it that way. Like some people, listen, I'm not dogging anybody that wants to, if you're listening, somebody out there is gnashing their teeth at us. Cause well, I do ClickBank. I do affiliates. That's cool. Maybe yeah. you're, maybe you do that to facilitate your mission outside of your business, right. which could be totally valuable. Um, but for me and for you and for people like us, I think that, yeah, like impact and, uh, I got to tell my story. I got to tell the story. I tell it every, I swear, I swear I tell the story every single episode, Ashley. Uh, so there's a, there's a, there's a quote. It's my favorite quote. People know this It's from mother Teresa, right? And mother, mother Teresa was being interviewed by this reporter and she's a nun in the middle of nowhere, helping poor people. Right. And he's like, and he goes, do you really think you can change the world all by yourself? And uh, Mother Teresa laughed at him when he said that. And she said, no, but I can pick up my stone, cast it out upon the waters and cause many ripples. And that's what's po- possible in a, in a membership site is you can every day throw your stone and cause ripples and, it, and your ripples hit all those members. And then they pick up their stone and it hits their kids and it hits their customers and it hits their spouse. And then they pick up their stones and around the world it goes. And yeah. that's the power of community. And that's the power of memberships on, on the internet and in today's age, for sure. Yeah. I love that. It's so true. I mean, it's the whole pay it forward thing, like that movie where he draws the map. He's like, if I help you, you help two people and now they do two people. That's right. I've impacted a hundred people, but I only helped you. That's right. And that can be yeah. scaled with or without a ClickBank <laughs> ebook. So Ashley, yeah. listen, tell everybody real quick before we finish up, um, tell them uh, your Instagram. Cause you have an awesome Instagram account. Like you've, I, I was watching you do something the other day and I was like, I got to go swing some kettlebells. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, so tell everybody about your uh, uh, Instagram and tell them where they can find out more about you and what you're doing uh, on your podcast and online. Yeah, definitely. Um, my Instagram is just my name. It's Ashley Drummond. The pancakes are abs protein pancakes. Uh, the podcast is Phoenix rising. You might have to search Phoenix rising, Ashley Drummond. Apparently there's a couple that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's where I post everything. The website for the pancakes is abspancakes.com. Thank you for being here, man. This was, this was a fun podcast. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that wraps up my conversation with Ashley Drummond's of abs pancakes.com the shark tank deal maker herself i hope you enjoyed today's podcast man i learned so much about not only the process of how something like that works but just how to be consistent as an entrepreneur how to follow your gut how to keep putting yourself in the right place to be at the right place at the right time and that conversation was a good reminder that action trumps everything it trumps ideas it definitely trumps talk Action is the only way you're ever going to make your dreams come true as an entrepreneur, for your family, in your relationships, and in your life. All right, y'all. That is all the time we have for this episode of the show. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found today's podcast valuable. If you did, could you do me a favor? Go subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And if you could, please leave me a five-star rating and a review. I read every single review, and I cannot wait to read yours. After that, go tell a friend about the podcast and have them do the same. I'd also love to connect with you on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Shane underscore Sams. Feel free to tweet me at any time. And if you want to learn more about how I became a self-employed, location-independent, family-focused online entrepreneur, and if you want to find out how you can do the same, head over to shanesams.com, that's S-H-A-N-E-S-A-M-S.com, and learn all about my online business coaching community. Head over to shanesams.com and learn all about my community and my online business coaching program. That's all I've got, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, remember these words I live by. Dream big. Take massive action. Be consistent. Be prolific. Be relentless. And do whatever it takes to take control of your life and change your family's future. I'll see you next time. (music) 